And Mike, you were, um, what was your unit? Well, to start off with, I was 19 when I was drafted. And uh, I took my basic training at Fort Knox. My AIT and my MOS at the time was artillery, and I went to uh, Fort Seal, Oklahoma for that. And then um, Fort Meade, Maryland for some more training, and then to Vietnam. And uh, I don't know about the rest of these guys, but I was pretty naive when I got to Vietnam. I didn't, <laughs> I, thought I, I thought I was bulletproof. I mean, I was in a, uh, a base camp that had several thousand, you know, people and all this equipment and thinking, let's see some action, you know. We didn't, you just didn't think. You didn't think about what war really was. And so it didn't take, it didn't take too many weeks to get over that. But uh, I was on a 105 howitzer and stationed in Co or Coochie was my base camp and it's about 40 miles north of Saigon and we were out in the field a lot we we would we would move almost daily but uh, uh, I saw quite a bit while I was over there but when I got home kind of like Bobby I never I never had the nightmares and kind of left all that behind me mm-hmm so you were in active combat too, were, and what was your job? You were we were on, well I was in a battery, a 105 howitzer battery, which is a small artillery piece. And uh, and there you wasn't, you, you said something about knowing, you know, being over there with some of the people that you knew. Uh, there wasn't anybody in Kentucky in the whole battery. That I was with, and, but you meet a lot of people and you make a lot of friends. You know, it's just that way. And then when you go over, you don't go over as a unit like they did in some of the other wars. You went over by yourself and you met these guys, you know, and you became good friends. Coming back was the same way. You were just kind of by yourself when you came back. But it was different as far as. The way I kind of look at it, we did lose the war, but it's just like Joe said, um, we don't, the, the soldiers don't feel like we've lost the war. We feel like it was politics that lost the war. But still, by losing the war, it's not like it was with World War II. Had we lost that war, we would be speaking you know, in German now. Exactly. When we lost the Vietnam War, actually nothing changed over here. You know, everything kind of went on as normal. Hmm. Yes, um, you know, except of course we were fighting um, communism and the takeover of, um, you know, Vietnam and um, and you know, and the spread of communism, which is what we were battling and I think in some regards we certainly you, you know we certainly split Vietnam but um, and you and and as you said probably if politics hadn't been involved we would have been over to but gosh that was a long how long was that war that's oh it went for it started in 65 the the big part of it and it was over in 75 75 yeah. and we came out and 10 years and lost how many? 58,000. So I was going to say, 55, I, I don't know the exact figure. I know it's over 58,000. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, I think, over 55. Uh, there's over 55,000 names, I believe, on the wall now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they're adding, nearly every year, they're adding more names to the wall. And as they're finding uh, remains, r remains, and uh, they're bringing them home, and uh, you know, um, so it was a 
I'm sure glad that we're we've been doing that. Um, you know, getting more cooperation where we can get the, the the soldiers that were missing in action and being able to bring them home. So. Yeah, it, it give closure to the family. I mean, that's that's the main thing about it. Right. Because a lot of them never had anything to. They didn't have a body or anything to bury when you know, they just found out that their loved one was missing in action. And that was it. There's that was the way it was with Mike Medley. You know, when Mike was about a about a month behind me in training, we were in the same class, and uh, well, uh, Randy was in our class too. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time I saw Mike alive, I was about a month ahead of him in training, and we went through two weeks of what they called RVN training, getting ready to go to Vietnam, and. And they would take another unit, and they would go out there, and they they would play the enemy, and we would you know, we would have to find them out there in the in the woods and stuff. Well, I saw Mike out that day. He 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 was in the company that was the enemy, and I saw him. That was the last time I saw him alive. And uh, when my mother wrote me a letter and told me that he was missing in action, boy, you know that 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 really goes through you when you're over there because you know what the situation is, and and it uh, it kind of kind of shook me up for a while until I finally found out that he was killed in action. Did that, when did they, they did find that out? Uh, yeah, they found it a out. A few months or? Yeah, it didn't take too long. Uh, he was in the same kind of uh, unit that I was. He was in uh, armored reconnaissance just like me, but he was in a different unit. And, uh, but, uh, but, and on reconnaissance, <clears throat> you go in and... We go out and look for them. <laughs> you go out and look for them. Okay. I, I don't understand all the terminology always, so I have to stop and... And I know the demil demilitarized zone, the DMZ... That was the and line we couldn't cross. The line, yeah, and you weren't allowed <laughs> to cross there. That separated north and south. And they Vietnam. could fire at you, but you yeah. weren't able to go over there, which could very well have made a big difference. But yeah. No, it's hard that when you get the politicians and things involved, I don't know, I don't understand it. Um, well, see, when I was in Cambodia, the reason I was working for an outfit called Mac Air was to give the United States deniability of having anybody in Cambodia. And I've met, over the years, I've met a lot of people that were in Laos and uh, uh, Cambodia. And, uh, you know, you can't believe every, right now, you can't believe everything that you hear in the news about where they're at and what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm, yeah. I'm an Yeah, you're a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... Well, you, you, you read now about all these people that are, you know, been in Iraq and Afghanistan that are working for these private companies that are, you know, engaged in training, I guess. So, I don't... I, it might be a similar situation, I suppose. Uh, I have a uh, friend uh, lives down in Georgia and uh, he was a airborne ranger and uh, he had uh, two tours in Iraq and got out of the army and went to work for a civilian company and then he spent nine years in uh, Iraq and uh, you know making six figure salary and basically doing the same thing he was doing in the service in the service mm -hmm. so that's most interesting isn't it i'm sure you all have some opinions about that don't you <laughs> we can't go i <laughs> don't want to go into that <laughs> you you weren't making that kind of money were you not in the <laughs> not even close to it <laughs> they were barely paying you enough mm -hmm. to uh, get by, weren't you? I think weren't they, they? They, uh, they say that most of the military 
today uh, are b below the paid below the poverty level. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then you got the civilians that uh, guys in the military get out and go to work for these uh, companies uh, that the government's contracting with. Yeah. yeah. And get paid big money for it. Yeah. I kept twenty five dollars a month in Vietnam. That's all I kept. The rest of it I sent home because <laughs> you didn't you, need it over there. You didn't have anything to spend it on. <laughs> were you married or? No, I wasn't married at the time. Okay. Were any of you married, or you were all just oh. young, right out of school? And 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 Mike, so you say because you'd probably never been you said, never been out of Washington County hardly. <laughs> I mean, well, nobody at eighteen you wouldn't well, be. You've been yeah. out just gotten out of high school. Well, I got and, out of high school, went to Louisville for, um, I was in Louisville for a year uh, before I got drafted. And I guess maybe I'd just been out of the state one time uh, when I went over there. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, made, with all these guys that you met, uh, while you, have you, are you still friends with some of them? You know, I was, I just wanted to get out of there when I left. And uh, I've looked on the internet and tried to find some of the guys that I was with but uh, we went by nicknames and I haven't been able to find but one and I was sitting at the house one night and this fellow that lives in Michigan uh, called me and he said that uh, he was going through some old papers and saw that we had flown we had gone through AIT together and uh, I wasn't with him in Vietnam, but anyway, um, he saw that we had flown on the same flight coming back home. So he's, a, he's really the only one I've had contact with since I left over there. And I'm kind of like Bobby. I would, I, I would, uh, I kind of like to go back over there too, because it is a beautiful country. It is. And I think people yeah. are uh, taking uh, yeah. tours over there now. Yeah. And, right. And and a lot of the. Uh, 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 veterans are going over and checking things out. Right. So the unit in Bardstown that uh, Ronnie McAvoy uh, was killed with. Uh, I know those guys have gone back two and three times, and uh, so yeah, there's several that do. But I had a very close friend uh, that I went through the field with in Vietnam. He was from Pittsburgh and uh, I'd been home probably 10, 15 years and uh, he called me one morning. Well, I had called him after I found him and anyway, he said, I'm coming down to see you. So anyway, he and his wife came down and uh, we, and, uh, we and James Darrell Coulter, we all got together and spent the weekend together and <laughs> Uh, my oldest daughter got buried that fall <clears throat> so the guy's name was Chuck Kaysen so Chuck called me and said I'm coming to the wedding so here he came back from Pittsburgh and so we stayed in touch over the years And but I haven't talked with him now for some time but uh, I did have the privilege of staying in touch with one of my friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, the unit I was with uh, gets together every year. Now, they have been for the last probably 10 years or so, we have a reunion. And I've only been to the one of the reunions. We went to Washington, D.C. that year, and we went to the wall together as a unit. And that was, it was really touching. A lot of the guys, that was the first time they'd ever even talked about it to a lot of their family and stuff. And uh, it, it was really uh, an emotional time. We we got together out right out in front of the front of the wall. They let us do it, and uh, we read off the names of all the guys that were killed in that unit. The time during the four years that that unit was there for four years before they deactivated, and uh, read off all the names, and then they played taps. And well, I know um, I know it's very emotional, and um, you know. Um, and now they're now women are going into the military all the time. I'm glad they didn't have uh, women in the draft. Cause I, I, 
I don't know if um, I can't understand the whole experience. You know, I see the movies and um, and you know read some of the books and uh, and uh, but all I can say is is that um, I appreciate very much your service to our country and uh, I would like to say personally I welcome you home and um, and I just want um, our listeners to uh, be sure this week and uh, and uh, thank a veteran for their for their service to our country and it's uh, I can't tell you what it means to me and I know it does to um, to our community to our country that um, we're just thankful for your service. So, thank you, Lisa. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Lisa. It's been, been an honor.